So let's talk about the one thing, the one innovation this laser has that I'm really excited for. What's up guys, I'm Nick and this is Build Dead Build. What comes before P3? P2, baby, P2. All right, and I'm sure most of you have already heard about the P2 by now. This is Xtool's new 55 watt CO2 laser. Don't want to ruin it for you, but this is the Glowforge killer. Glowforge, don't buy a Glowforge anymore. Absolutely no reason to. Glowforge hasn't changed their design in years. Glowforge is in the business of selling you materials at this point. They're not cutting edge. They are not innovative, but they have a really good marketing department. <laughs> and if you have a Glowforge machine, that's okay. We're accepting of all kinds here. This thing is so packed full of innovations and goodness. I'm gonna run you through some quick stuff and then we are gonna get into one of the things I'm really excited about. And we're probably gonna just make several videos on the different things that make this the, the, the slow forge killer. This thing up, this thing has a pass through. So this opens up and opens up in the back too. And you can literally pass something through here up to about that thick. And with Xtool's conveyor system that's coming out soon, it will actually feed a board through here. Technically, the only limit you have is the width of the board, which if you're finding lumber that's wider than this machine on a regular basis, you are a lumberjack. You could take like a one by eight that's eight foot long, put it on the conveyor system, run it through here, and it will engrave all eight foot of that board without having to stop and reposition anything. You can put a rotary in here. It looks like this one takes the M1 rotary, which is, it's still the RA2, it's just got a different mount on it. But if you're picking up this particular unit, you wanna get the corresponding rotary for this unit. Now some of the gut stuff, and I might run, run some B-roll on here because it's, it's, not, it's not real easy to see, but your laser system is here, and then you have a camera here, which shoots the entire bed, and it's gonna give you a little bit of a, a fisheye look at the entire bed but you also have a detail camera up here. Both of them are 24 megapixels, I believe. So once I put my material in the machine, I hit refresh, it's gonna take a big picture. So it's gonna take a picture of the full bed. There we go, okay. So this is what we're looking at right now, right? If I back out, that is our whole bed. So now what I wanna do is I wanna capture a close view. So let's say I wanna engrave over in this area. I'm gonna bring this over. So that's kind of your fisheye look right there, right? Once I do this and it captures that, that's gonna give you a closer, like, spot on that spot view. So now, like, this little highlighted box is exactly what the laser is looking at right now. Now, just while we're here real quick, the newest beta of the software looks like we're gonna have layers from now on, so that's pretty cool. Okay, so if I want to Insert an image. I'm just gonna throw a little build dead build in there because why not? Okay, so we're gonna scale that down and then I'm just gonna make this small enough to go in here. Toot. Then we come over here and we're gonna engrave. We're gonna do 20% power at 150 speed for the engrave. I'm actually gonna bump this up just a little bit. Let's go 140. And then I'm gonna insert a circle. So I just wanna draw a circle around here. Okay, and this is gonna be a cut. So we're gonna make it a cut. I'm gonna make this Power at 100%, speed at 30. I know some of you guys are gonna ask if, uh, should you be setting this to 100%? Uh, the jury's kind of still out on that. You'll have people that say, don't set it to 100% because you'll wear your bulb out faster. You'll say, have them set it to 100% because you get more efficiency out of that cut and you can go a little faster. I operate in the capacity that I need things to go as fast as possible. So if I'm using this at 100%, and my laser life is lower because of that, I'll just replace the CO2 tube when I need to. Okay, now the one thing I did forget to do is, let me get out of here. I can come over here and since this is flat, flat, if you hit this little target right here and it is gonna measure, you just wanna get it on the material. It's The machine's gonna go over there and it's gonna measure how thick the material is. So that's saying it's 3.3 millimeters thick. All right, so I believe we are ready to run this booger. We're gonna hit process. So now we hit the big blue button. Boop. All right, so aside from the fact that I caught a little bit of an another an old engrave in there, it looks pretty good. Um, and the cut on the edge has got that nice brown color. It's not black like it is with a diode a lot of times. So you know what we say for this? We say, hooty. 
So let's talk about the one thing, the one innovation this laser has that I'm really excited for. And that is the fact that it can engrave on a curve. Now this technology is still in its infancy. Time it can only handle kind of like slight curves, anything that, that gets too drastic, it can't quite map. But it is really cool. What it does is using the sensors in the machine, it maps out points on that curved surface and then it raises and lowers the Z axis of the laser while it's engraving. Very cool stuff. Now as I'm removing the blades so I can uh, get our material in here. This got me to thinking. So originally, you know, people are engraving inside bowls and things like that, which is, is neat. It's a, it's a cool ability to have. But what it got me wondering about is what about tumblers and glasses and things like that? If this thing can do curved surfaces, do you really need a rotary anymore? At least for if you're going to do a logo on one side of a cup and things like that. Here's why that's a big deal. One, it's something you don't have to buy, right? If you're only gonna do them every once in a while, you don't need to invest in a rotary. But two, a lot of the problems that people have when engraving with the rotary is swapping back and forth because they accidentally put the rotary in there backwards or something along those lines. If you take away that rotating and you just allow it to be the Z axis that's doing the engraving, would you really need a rotary? Or could you just use this machine as is, obviously you would need the riser to do cylindrical objects. We's gonna find out. <laughs> Let's do it. So today I'm gonna be using this as our test subject. This is a stemless stainless steel wine glass. And the reason I'm using it is because not only, this presents a lot of problems, right? It is, it's not flat, it's round, and it tapers at one end. So the butt, it's got a it's got a big dumper on it. It's got a it's got a larger dumper than up here. So it's kind of hourglass, if you will. Basically this thing's gonna have to plot out this angle around along with the width of this. So let's uh let's do this. Alright, so we have our wine glass in there. It is just uh, the one, two, three blocks are there just to keep it from moving. Close this guy. Now I've played with this once before and this bit is a little tedious. Okay, so we're gonna refresh and then I'm gonna capture a close view. And then what I wanna do is come over here to curve process. All right, and then I wanna kind of set this right about there. Come out of that and we're gonna go curve measure. When we hit this, what it's gonna do is it's gonna ask us for two vertices, one at the top left and then the other at the bottom right. And then it's gonna go through and measure points in between there. This is where, like I said, it's a little bit tedious because you have to come over here. You have to be right on the machine. Or you don't have to be right on the machine, but you're gonna bring the laser point over. All right, so I'm gonna move the laser. And as I move that, I'll drop this down to 10 millimeters. I'm gonna bump it over. And then I'm gonna mark my first vertice. I'm gonna come over. All right, and that's probably good. Mark our second vertices. And next I go to the next screen and then I hit start measuring. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna go through dot by dot and it's gonna give us a like a kind of a curved mesh of what that cup is gonna look like. And that's just going point by point and measuring. So it even gave me an error here. It says part of the curved surface is out of the processing range. Do not place elements there. So basically we went too far off the side of the cup. Taking a stab at settings. I don't have any established settings. We're doing 30% power, 80 millimeters per second. In the curve process, that's as high as the millimeters will go. I found that out the hard way the other day where I, just, I thought I set it to 300, but it only got the 30 in there and went real slow. Fingers <laughs> crossed, like this, right? Boop. All right, let's rock and roll. Okay, so second time's a charm. The first time, I guess the laser hit the material and kind of moved it around and then just kind of did that. <laughs> but second time, looks like this. So uh, let's go clean it up and see what we think. I always like to clean these up with a little blue powder coat remover. It just works better than anything else I've used to, uh, to get the residuals up. But I'll be right back, I'm gonna run to the sink. So that actually cleaned up really well. I was a little worried that the detail wasn't gonna be there, but I, I would say that I probably almost need to go about 5%, maybe 10% higher on power, but 
Bam, check that out. That looks pretty damn good, considering that that was not done on a rotary. Hmm, very cool.